In this video today, I wanna to talk about why most brands get stuck with paid ads because a lot of small to medium sized businesses wanna experiment with platforms like Meta and Google, but then what happens is regardless of a healthy ROAS, they still run backwards and you know the, the money that they make from these platforms go into the account, but they out just as quickly, which inevitably sometimes actually you know allows them to run backwards. So in this video, I wanna talk about why most brands get stuck and how you can identify the problem and how to potentially move forward so that you can scale more profitably and consistently. Hello everyone, my name is Jan Ray and I'm the founder of V8 Media. We are a top 1% marketing agency here in South Africa. I'm also the first and only South African to speak at AdWorld to date. And I'm also the author of the book called Adjust. So not sure if you've got your copy yet, but you can have a look at our website and grab it for free today. Right, without any further ado, I wanna dive into today's video where we're gonna unpack why most brands get stuck with paid ads. I'll be sharing my screen with you guys today. It's gonna to pop in and out. And uh, the reason for that is that I wanna share some context, some pictures uh, to help explain everything that's in my mind because I'm basically vomiting out my thoughts and I want to make sure that this is as curated and uh, it flows naturally so that it makes sense for everybody and i also want to say if there's any value in this video today i want to encourage you to like and subscribe it would mean the world to me so without any further ado let's just dive in why do most brands get stuck with paid ads you know there's a couple of things we need to take into account so the first thing is most business owners don't understand their own financial structures this is what i've realized we've worked with over 300 brands now over the last few years since 2018 we've had companies come and go the ones that we most sad about or frustrated about are usually companies that want to spend money on platforms like Meta and Google and they would have a very healthy rise. We've seen brands with rises as high as 20, 30, sometimes even 40 when, when it comes to higher ticket items. And when we were a little bit more naive as an agency, we would get an email from the client saying, hey guys, thanks for everything, but we're most likely going to cancel the service. And then we would go into the ad account and we would see that they have an extremely healthy rise. You know, rise like maybe something like 5 or 10, 40x sometimes. But even I would sit back and go, what the hell? How did this happen? You know, what the hell are we doing wrong? And as we matured as an agency and we started understanding the business economics of things we realized that a lot of these businesses have healthy rises but they're still not making enough profit to cover their expenses and therefore they're running backwards so the first thing a business needs to have or a business owner needs clarity on is the following they need to understand their businesses margins exact operating expenses the operating margin as a whole and then what's needed to break even you see without healthy margins you don't have enough profitability in the product to actually acquire customers profitably online and that's what you want to do you want to run ads online to acquire customers. What you need to understand is you're going to have to hire someone to do the marketing for you. That comes at a cost. Then there's also the cost of running the ads and the cost of acquiring the customer. So all these things need to be factored in if you want to truly make a success out of your business. And most people just don't do it. They fly blind and therefore they get stuck because they actually don't know where the goal is. They don't know where they are in correlation to the goal and they just completely in the dark, which then causes a lot of anxiety and stress because their bank account is going backwards, but they have no idea why. So then to conclude, the reason you want to know these things before you hire a marketer is basically simple. You are, like I said, going to have to pay someone else to do the marketing for you. That's if you don't have the time for it. You're going to have to hire a freelancer, whether it's Upwork or whether it's a repairable agency in a country, some uh, you're going to have to pay someone to do it. So that comes at a management fee and also the cost of actually running the ads. So those costs all need to be factored in and we need to understand how it correlates uh, as a whole. What is the actual relationship between those costs and the amount of profit that you need to make to break even. So you need to understand this and how it impacts your profitability because without it, at the end of the day, you will be unclear of your numbers and you'll be flying blind, hoping for the best. And like I said, you'll be completely left in the dark, not knowing where North, East, South or West is. And therefore, it's just easier to stop the strategy as a whole. That's what most brands do. They panic, go in a frenzy and then just stop the ads. Now, aside from understanding your margins, there are also three other boxes that needs to be ticked before you hire an agency or before you start spending a ton of money on uh, paid ads. So the reason I say this is because this is just the foundation. If your business doesn't have this, you will always struggle. So it's not just to the benefit of hiring an agency or seeing a success online. It's just that if you don't tick these boxes, your business will just struggle, period. And at the end of the day, if you do tick these boxes, then everything else will just become a lot easier for you as well. So the first box we need to tick is just healthy margins. Your business needs a healthy amount of profitability built into the product so that you can actually afford to take some of that money and acquire a customer profitably to buy that product, right? I mean, that's just common sense. Now, there are two sides to this coin because what we like to advise is that your business have a 32 or 35% GP or more, ideally more, you know, the more the better. We also understand that there are businesses who have very low GPs, but they run on a ton of volume. 
For example, if you're a wholesaler, your GPs will be very low, but you have big brands buying a ton of stock from you and that makes it okay because at the end of the day, you are banking rands and not percentages. And that's why that makes sense. But most small to medium sized brands who start out don't have volume and they need to you know, hand to hand combat, try and get sales for their businesses. So if that's the case, then you do need a healthy amount of margin, unfortunately, unless you already have a strategy that can drive a ton of traffic your way in exchange for you know a low cost per sale so that you can remain profitable. But that's very rarely the case. So if you're starting out and you don't really have any organic sales and you have very little amount of sales volume, then if you want to run paid ads, you need healthy margins so that you don't run backwards when you actually run the ads, just because it's expensive to acquire customers online. So just to conclude here, if you don't have that, you need to be doing enough volume to ensure that you're making enough profit to take the risk. If you don't have any of the above, you're putting the cash flow of the business at risk because you're undergoing a bigger expense than the potential profit that you can be making. Simple as that. Right, so point number two is that you just need an amazing product. And it sounds stupid, but mediocre products and average products just don't sell as well unless you're a very repetable retailer or you have a very amazing brand as a whole. So you need amazing products, okay? If you're a D2C brand with your own products, then it needs to be amazing. And I'm not saying that it needs to be amazing to you. Like, don't be biased and romantic to your own products. The amazingness of the product will be determined by the customer. And that ultimately will be determined by the amount of reviews that you're getting. So just an example, last year, VA Media bought into a small little business that just started. It's a fragrance brand. And within eight months, we had over 1,400 reviews. Now that's insane. That is a clear indication that the product is amazing and people want it and people love it and people are gonna come back to keep buying it. If you don't have an amazing product, you're just gonna make life a lot more difficult for yourself. And the more amazing the product, the lower the cost per sale will be because the more someone will be inclined to actually give you money in exchange for the product. The more average the product, the more mediocre, the more crappier the product. The higher the cost per sale will be because the more convincing you need to do for someone to actually buy the product. Right, and then lastly, you need to be willing to reinvest in the growth of your business. And what I mean by that is actually taking the amount of profit that you're making on a monthly basis and reinvesting that into the business. Because the main reason most brands get stuck is because they don't want to reinvest that profit because they have to use that profit to cover other expenses, family expenses. You know, most people who start out, you know, might be say between the ages of 25 and older. You know, some of these guys are married, some of them have kids, or maybe you just have a luxurious lifestyle that you don't probably need. And um, if that's the case, then you're gonna wanna make profit so that you can afford this lifestyle and you're gonna be suffocating your business. So if you're starting out and you really wanna make this work, you need an amazing product, you need healthy margins, and then you need to be open to taking a huge amount of profit every month and reinvest it back into ads so you can keep scaling. And at the end of the day, if none of these boxes are ticked, then you'll have a tough time making your digital marketing profitable, period. On the other hand, if you do tick all these boxes uh, and you're still struggling to break even, then it could be because of two reasons. Let me quickly explain. So the first reason is your ROAS is not healthy. So if you do tick the above boxes and you're spending money on marketing, on Meta and Google, and you're still not making the profit or the revenue back that you want to make, then there's a good chance that if you go into the actual data of these campaigns, that maybe they're just not as healthy as you thought they were. And this is where you can then start to poke around. So one thing I want to say is that if you're going to access, uh, you know, your dashboard or your data of these paid campaigns, you need to know that your ROAS is relative. It's relative to the industry. And what I mean by that is if someone says, what's a healthy ROAS? Some people will say, well, anything over two. But we've seen brands that have a ROAS as, as low as 1.5 be very profitable. And we've seen brands with a ROAS as high as 20 not make any money. So it is all relative to the industry and your own business at the end of the day. So this is where you need to have someone hopefully guide you to give more clarity on the matter. And this is also why understanding your own metrics, your know, business economics is so crucial because you need to understand what the, the relationship is between the ROAS and the actual amount of money that you're banking on a, on a monthly basis. Just to give you some examples, so we've seen that some naturally low ROASs might be between 1.5 to 2 and others, especially higher ticket pro products, have much higher percentages. So they'll have like a 5x or a 10x rise. So here's an example of, I mean, we, this is the month of March. So this was literally last month. So here's Here's um, a client that we've been working with. They have a 4.3 X rise. We've invested 87,000 Rand. We've made 300 or 292,000 Rand back to be exact. And this is extremely profitable for them because they have healthy margins. And yeah, we've had a 5 X rise before. We've had a 3 X rise before, but we've seen the average is about 4.5 around there. Um, you know, on months like Black Friday, obviously it's much higher. Uh, during months like this uh, January, it might be a little bit lower because people don't have money. But we've seen like, if we maintain the rise between four and five, the business is actually extremely healthy. And that's where we try and remain as we scale. So on the flip side of that, we've also seen brands, you know, this is a classic example of January before with a brand, uh, obviously this client is still with us, but they're spending about 100K on marketing and we've done over a million in sales. That's a 12X rise. But this company specifically, their margins is much lower and they're sitting with about 25% gross profit and so forth. So the amount of profit they made back from those ads, I mean, 25% of that, let's just hyper 
hypothetically say it's a million, then they made 250K profit back on the actual ads. Um, now, if they made 100K, it will only be 25 grand profit. So it's understanding that ROAS is really relative. And, you know, us as an agency prefer to focus on a, a term called POAS, which is profit on ad spend, but more on that in another video. Lastly, here's another example of a clothing brand that just started. This was literally the last 30 days. Um, we started with a 10 grand ad spend, which is very little, but we sat with a 25X ROAS. The amount of money we made back is 250,000 uh, rand. So that's a 25X ROAS. Uh, it sounds amazing. The margins are 30%. So if you do 250,000 times 30 divided by 100, you know, they've made 75,000 rand profit. Now, after expenses, is that going to be enough? You know, we'll still figure out. So now it's just about spending more money on marketing so you can actually cover, you know, those operational costs that we've discussed because this is most likely not going to improve any further. That's already really high for the industry. Now, I do quickly want to mention that all industries and businesses are unique. Yeah, you know, it's quite difficult to say what RAS should be unless you have had the opportunity to work with multiple brands in various industries like us. We've worked with over 30 different industries now, over 300 brands. So we have a good idea of, of what this should be like, but not everybody might have that information. So this is why you need to understand your business economics so well. So just to conclude the first issue, if the rise is low, then you need to look into your optimizing you know, strategies. And this would be sitting with your marketing guy, your agency, or whoever is doing it for you. If you're saying, hey guys, like we can see the rise is low, what are we going to do to increase it? And this is where you improve your targeting, your messaging, your offers. Um, all of these things will help you potentially increase your ROAS. You know, can you do some conversion rate optimization on the site? Or can you make the landing page uh, a little bit more psychologically appealing to the actual customer or consumer that you're trying to target, whether you're looking to drive online sales or generate leads? So as we've said, like if you're not seeing the money back, the first thing it might be is the ROAS is not healthy. So if you go into the ad account and you are confident that it is uh, the ROAS that's the problem, then you need to start optimizing that as best you can. And here's just some ways you can do it. You can look at your targeting. Are your audiences still converting? If not, you know, maybe test some new ones or maybe broaden those audiences and see what happens. You know, are your creative still working? Can you do something new, fresh and more creative that actually grabs more attention? Um, can you work on your messaging on your offer? Is your offer valuable enough? Is it captivating enough? Like all of those things can essentially help you improve your ROAS. Um, but this is not a video on how to improve ROAS. This is a video explaining why brands get stuck with paid ads. So to conclude, if you're not profitable, even though ROAS is considered to be healthy, then there's a different issue. And that issue is that you are not spending enough money on your marketing. Now you're going to be like, yo, this doesn't make any sense. Well, let me explain. This is where the profit and uh, hill analogy comes in. So it's an analogy that I created a while back uh, for the team to get them to understand, you know, where certain businesses lie uh, when it comes to making their profit, enough profit back to cover their expenses from a paid ad site. So this is the profit hill analogy. What's the profit hill analogy? It is very simple. I want you to imagine a hill. I've drew a triangle because um, <laughs> that's the closest I can get to a hill and it looks a little bit more professional in my opinion. So at the bottom of the hill, uh, we've got you losing money. Okay, that's you at the bottom of the hill. You're standing here going, well, this is not where I need to be. I need to be all the way up there. At the top of the hill, you actually breaking even. Okay, so break even really in reality means the revenue that you're spending on marketing, you're making that money back and you're covering the costs and other expenses. Okay, so it's the ad revenue mi minus the other expenses what does that equate to if that's zero then you're technically breaking even so you are technically here at the bottom of the hill when you're starting with your meta ads or google ad strategy and you need to get to the top of the hill as quickly as possible okay and this is kind of like where most brands get stuck because they don't have a guide in order to get them there uh, they don't understand their business economics so they get stuck they just get lost in the dark the goal is over there but they have zero actually they don't even know where the goal is they don't even know where they are in correlation to the goal so they're just lost and that's why if they run ads and they're going backwards and they agency claims that their ROAS is healthy, they just pause and they don't know what to do. They're like, oh, the agency told us the ads are doing great. You have a 5X ROAS. It's amazing, but we're going backwards. And that is because the amount of profit that you're making back from the ads is just not covering the amount of expenses that you have. And the only way to solve that is to spend more money on ads. So let me quickly explain. If you're spending 10,000 Rand on ads, right? And you have a 4X ROAS, then you're generating about 40,000 Rand back in revenue. So now after your cost of goods, shipping and other fees, you're left with, let's say hypothetically, a 20% profit margin. That will be eight grand profit. So that means that you're spending 10 grand a month on ads and you're generating eight grand back. That sounds amazing, right? In profit, that's like, hey, wow, we're spending 10 and we're getting eight grand back in profit. However, after operating expenses, staff, rent, maybe the agency that you're paying, 
let's just hypothetically say you've got 20,000 Rand worth of expenses. Now you're actually running at a loss. You're running at a 12,000 Rand loss because you didn't factor in the agency that you have to pay or the guy that you have to pay to do your marketing. You didn't factor in the fact that you're trying to cover your rent and your salaries and payroll and all these other things. So that is why, even though that you have a healthy ROAS, which is in this case, hypothetically four, you're not making enough money back. Okay, so the question is, how do you solve it? What do you do next? Um, and what would that look like? Okay, so this is where most brands get stuck. And this is why I've made this video to help you potentially unstuck if this is you. Most brands, in this case, they panic, okay? Maybe this is you. I know it's been me before when I was younger. So I panic and we go into an ads optimization friendly. So we tell the agency, optimize the ads. We need better creatives. We need better copy. We need better targeting. Why are you targeting these people? You now starting to look for faults in the actual paid ad strategy. And you trying to get the 4X rise to a 5X rise, which will make very little difference really in theory. And this is where you're missing the bigger problem. And you just now anxious and stressed and you end up making the wrong decision. So what is the thing that you should do? Well, first of all, how do we here now we're losing money we need to break even we closed we we you know i mean we 12 we're making a 12 grand loss is not ideal but we can fix that we can fix that how well aim to get to the break even point as quickly as possible now we can go and optimize the ads so what are the odds of us getting from a four to a five x rise by optimizing ads well it's possible but even if we get to five x we're still going to be running at a loss so we technically need to get to a seven or eight x in order to make this really profitable so what are the odds of us doubling our ROAS? Hmm, you know especially considering we want to spend more money on marketing probably not as you know probable as we wanted to be or as highly likely as we wanted to be. So what is the best thing that we can do? Okay, well, here's the answer. I'm going to be sharing it with you. So what you should be doing is instead of spending 10 grand on ads and getting a 40,000 uh, 40, rand return, you can look into doubling or tripling your budget. So the answer is that you need to spend more money on ads. Why? Because you have a healthy ROAS in relation to your industry, okay? So when you have a healthy ROAS and you're still running at a loss, then what you should be doing is, first of all, understand that it's just because you're not making enough profit back from the ads. But if you had to increase the budget, you will be making more profit back from the ads. So therefore, you can start to cover your costs and actually start to grow, okay? So if you were spending 10 grand on ads and you now triple that budget to 30K, a lot of people can say, oh, that doesn't make sense, you know, because your ROAS will decline the more you spend. Okay, I get it. We have seen that it's possible to not make it happen, but obviously the more you spend at some point, there might be diminishing returns. I completely get that. So for argument's sake, let's just say that you ramp up the budget and your 4x rise drops to a 3.5x rise okay so the 4x drops to 3.5 but you're spending 30k a month on marketing that means that you're making 105,000 rand back now okay so 30,000 times 3.5 is 105k now if you remain at a 20% profit margin 20% of 105 105 over there is 21,000 rand profit before operating expenses okay and we said hypothetically that you have 20,000 rands worth of operating expenses so let's unpack this now so you've got 20,000 rand operating expenses which we now deducting from the 21,000 rand which means you've just made a thousand rand profit and you didn't really have to do much outside of just increasing the budget because everything was already ticked you checked all the boxes all you just had to do was spend more money and now you're over the profit hill you're there and you're starting to make profit and now you can scale accordingly so in this video guys i just want to quickly conclude for you you need to understand the relationship between your ROAS and your expenses um, a healthy ROAS doesn't always mean profit okay so you really need to dive deeper into the actual nitty-gritty of you know what that ROAS actually means so that you can actually determine what rose is going to be healthy before you scale and sometimes no amount of tweaking will get you out of running backwards and you just have to spend more money okay it doesn't matter who you want to blame you can blame the marketing agency the guy because he's not tweaking the ads he rested for 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 two hours and didn't tweak the ads for those two hours that is not the problem the problem is you need to be spending more in order to make more because everything else is tick there's diminishing returns in optimizing the ads and the biggest lever you can pull to make a difference is to spend more pull the lever crunk And that, my friends, is me explaining why most brands get stuck with paid ads because they don't understand their own business economics. They don't understand how the money that they're investing is actually affecting their expenses and their profitability. And at the end of the day, there's the profit hill analogy. A lot of brands, even though they have healthy rises, we've seen this so many, 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 many times. We've seen brands come our way. They have an insane rise. We've grown their account from a 3x rise to a 6x rise and they still cancel. We're like, what the hell? It's because they don't understand their business economics. And at that time, we didn't either because we were a little bit naive and we were a little bit younger in the market to understand these things. Well, there's very few agencies who actually understand these things. Um, you know, we had to learn these lessons the hard way. But now we know it. Now we can share it with you. And hopefully you can take this information, apply it to your business and hopefully get unstuck and keep growing. Right, so that's the end of my video. I really hope there was some value in it for you. Again, if there was, I want to uh, encourage you to like and subscribe for more regular updates. Like I said, we're going to be doing more stuff like this on a weekly basis. So I really hope that you tag along for the ride. Much love from my side. Have a great rest of your week.
Bye.